Hey, I'm Vernon Felton, Senior Editor at Bike Magazine. We're at Bike's 2015 Bible of Bike Test. And tonight we're talking about a GT Sanction. It's a completely new sanction for 2015. It had a lot of reworking, courtesy of Dan Atherton. And it retails for 2170 That is just the frame only because in the United States it's sold only as a frame. In Europe you get the whole thing built up. We'll get into why that is. But 2170 for the frame and a float X rear shock. What would you guys think? Uh, this thing goes downhill real well. And it should because it's basically a mini Fury, right? Right, yeah. I mean, it's in their DH gravity the, the gravity deal yeah not category in, not in their all it's not in a, it's not an all mountain bike it's not a trail yeah. bike it's a gravity bike yep but i guess having said that I mean, it climbs pretty well for a bike that's supposed to be just a gravity bike really well i mean what's I mean, yeah, like yeah, what it is for what it is 69 degrees or 60 60 degree 60, oh sorry yeah but Four, it feels slacker than that it feels slack and long yeah like, but to your point yeah it climbs it climbs with dignity. It works. Yeah. The one we had was a fully open shock and no no band aids, no nothing, no no compression damping switches, and it just kind of like it pedaled uphill okay. And wide open, it still climbed that well. well yeah, it climbed the pretty well. The pedaling aspect, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's long up a bit and slack, yeah. and yeah. the front end is in another county if you're going up things and it's just like coming up off the ground or. It's moving around, around the trail around wherever it wants like, to go. I think I was spending more arm energy keeping it from flopping around than I was leg energy pedaling it up. I mean, at some point, right? Like, but it's not. It's not meant to go uphill. It's right. just meant to get you to. It's meant to to get the Athertons to the, to the next, next stage. stage. If, if your last name is Atherton, you probably don't have any problem <laughs> climbing it at all. Right. You know, and they, they said that, you know, again, Dan had a, a lot of input. He said he didn't want an all-mountain bike with a slack head angle. He wanted more of a downhill bike that could be pedaled. Yeah. Which is really how it feels. Like it, and it, does, it doesn't even feel like it normalizes its behavior until you're going about 20 miles an hour. Like, it's, it doesn't care what line you take. It doesn't care if there are corners. It doesn't care what bumps there are. You just, it's a big, fast Early man plow thing. I'm not even close to qualified <laughs> to be qualified enough to actually do justice to this bike. Enduro is kind of seen a shift, right? Where some of the enduro bikes should be basically kind of going more gravity oriented, given how technical enduro courses are getting. Which is essentially like the retirement home for downhillers, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> stand a reason that they would probably want. Yeah, slightly less travelly downhill bikes to ride. Yeah, exactly, and that's the, and that's why this bike takes more from the Fury. It's an iDrive bike. It's not an angle optimized suspension system like we had on the Sensor. It's not an AOS bike. It it's basically like a Fury downhill bike, but with shorter linkage. Right. It's compact. The, the goal here was to basically make this bike incredibly stiff and stout, uh, but obviously in a lighter weight package. Right. Yeah. So, you did a bunch of research on on the bikes, um, why is it not offered as a complete bike in the U.S.? Yeah, it's a good question, right? Why offer it complete in Europe? Well, they, you know, the way GT looked at it, Europe, the Enduro thing, is it's running, it has a longer tradition, longer history, it's a little bit more formalized. There's just more people doing it right. than here in the States, and so it sort of made sense to them to have the bike as a complete package. There are just more people wanting that bike there. Okay. And they said, well, here in the States, you know, this is a niche market. If we offered it as a full bike this year, there may just not be that much of a demand for it. And they thought, well, frankly, if you really want, you want this bike, you want a bike this specific and tailored, you probably know the components you want. You probably know how you want to build it up yourself. And you can do that. So, you know, if there's enough demand this year for this in the States, I wouldn't be surprised if they offered it as a complete bike next year. You yeah, know, the thing I is, mean, you don't have to race Enduro either. This could be a bike that you put on your tailgate and drive up to the top of a really bitch of descent, or you could pedal it too, obviously. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, it seems like you could stick a coil shock on this thing and it would be a downhill bike. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it'd be an awesome park bike. <laughs> you know? It could be a really cool instead, park bike. Instead of being like a tennis travel bike, it's what, just over six. Yeah, Yeah. And, you put a dual crown fork on the sucker, yeah. it's like, a. at that point, it's a downhill bike. It seems like a pretty versatile rig, actually. I do have one major criticism, which is, it's uh -huh. a loud bike. Mm -hmm. But, oh, Describe the noise. Uh, chain slap. Ding, 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 and you had a clutch drill on it, and it was still. Yeah, and the problem is, is that um, 
Well, I, I think maybe part of the problem is that Will's designed with the Athertons and they're sponsored by Shimano. And uh, we were running a one by SRAM on it with a yeah. smaller... We had, what, a 30-tooth ring on that thing? 30-tooth ring right. and a 10-tooth uh, cog. Right. So it's like pretty small little chain area. Um, and but the chain stays right in the way. Even in the in the so in the ten cog, um, the chain actually hits the chain stay. <laughs> but just if, resting there. If we were full on like large bicep men, we'd put a forty on that up front, <laughs> and it wouldn't be a problem anymore, would it? Maybe, Maybe not. not. Less. Buddy? It just it just seems like it was a little bit of an oversight on that part. Yeah, but yeah. Um, who knows? Maybe they'll correct it. I think. GT tends to do the this thing where they make a bike in aluminum first to prove it mm. and get uh, like it's kind of like a public mule, right? And then and then they'll kind of op- work on opening up uh, carbon molds because those are expensive. Yes, if we say and yeah, you know, so maybe we'll be looking at a carbon one in the future and hopefully with corrected chain stays to get a little bit more clearance in that area. Well, there you have it. If you want to know more about this bike, Check out Bike Magazine's Bible of Bike Tests. If you want to see more bike test videos, go to bikemag.com.